Regular Asia Radio. People been taught different things. Are they taught about How you doing? Oh, I'm doing. How are you? In a different way. Ah, oh, nice. Very well. Very well. Nice to hear you and nice that you can hear me. Yeah, sorry about that. I had interference with the channels because of the recording. So I okay. Uh, I'm so, sorry for blaming you. That's that the issue on your end. <laughs> Not a problem. Don't worry, buddy. How's going on your end? Everything is great. Just uh, getting ready for leaving tomorrow morning for the tour. So spending uh, the time I can with the family and rehearsing and packing and, you know, busy. Yeah. So you're going to France. Are you ready? Brought everything you need for the temple. Yeah. We're actually flying um, to Paris, and then we're flying on to start the tour in Reunion Island. Oh, great. So we have a long travel from California. And it's much colder than in California. Keep that in yeah, mind. yeah. Especially where, where I am. It's very warm. It's like 90 degrees right now. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, you're yeah. Nice. You're in the right place. <laughs> Tell me, uh, this is not the first time for foundation that's in the Europe having a tour. So, right, yeah, for sure. But for the new members that just came in and who went to the last album, is so how, how, how do they feel about the upcoming tour? Are they ready? Have they had enough time to practice the songs from the past album? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're ready. Very, very... Um talented and, and gifted musicians um, who are uh, ready to take on the mantle, you know, knowing all the great musicians and musicianship that Groundation is known for. So, you know, everyone is excited to live it, live up to the standard and push it beyond. And yeah, you know, it's a lot of music. It's a lot, uh, it's a lot of challenging things uh, for the musicians. Uh, but uh, yeah, they're digesting it and it's coming together very nice. I don't care about that, that they're educated musicians as you are. <laughs> okay, uh, and also, questions in the same manner. Since the past album has been uh, recorded in two English analog tracks, is that like sort of a preparation for the for the live performances? Because everything needs to be perfect, there are no space for mistakes and stuff. Right, right. Um, yeah, I mean, it's also um, it's also a way that I like to work in the studio. You know, um, in the digital world, sometimes people record four or five different organ parts, and they record you know six different trumpet solos to piece together, and it kind of just makes the project go on long. It makes it less uh, um, organic in, in how it's played, uh, and it's nice just to be able to literally hit the red button. Drummer counts off, band is recording the full song front to back, recording the drums, the bass, the organs, clavinets, the pianos, um, uh, all of the um, solos and things, everything live. So yeah, it, it is great preparation for how the band really is going to be on stage performing together. And the experience with Jim Fox, how working with him professionally. Yeah, man, he's the greatest. He is the greatest. Uh, Jim Fox, uh, I met him in Jamaica in about uh, 1999, and uh, from Hebron Gate, flew him to California, recorded on the two-inch tape, and never looked back. He has touched, you know, recorded, mixed, and mastered every album from that time until now, and we actually had the honor and privilege to have him on tour this summer with the next generation, and it was his first time ever in Europe. So, uh, yeah, it's a blessing. I've never seen an engineer, you know, he's in his late 60s now. I've been in reggae music for 40 years. Um, everybody from the past, uh, with culture and Black Uhuru, Is Your Vibration, Barris Hammond, you know, Gregory Isaacs, Don Carlos, all these great musicians. And everybody from the present, Jay Boog, Revolution, Soja, Groundation. So he's very much still on the pulse of reggae music and uh, his work ethic. Jim Fox will be in the studio. If I'm in there, 14 hours, 15, 16, Fox, you all right, you know? Yeah, man, having the time of my life, I'm ready. I, I've never seen an engineer so hardworking and so so meticulous in his notes to be able to really know all the ins and outs of the recording. So the live performances will be like studio version with him on your side. 
he actually he's not not here for this t- tour. It was just the one tour. I convinced him to, to leave the studio. That I mean, you know, Jim Fox is there in the studio mixing all these things and recording all these things and getting paid big money to do it. So uh, I was able, I was able to steal him away from the studio for four weeks. Yeah, actually, I heard from one of my colleagues that heard Foundation Live. They said that uh, you had a woman technician taking care of the sound. She was yeah, uh, on stage. She, yeah, the money. And it was, like, it was like studio version, like he was listening to the album live. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the best thing. Once you have the musicians talented, giving you the sound, Hopefully the engineer can just balance it and and and, and make it really sparkle. <laughs> That's really great. Okay, uh, so let's talk about the latest album, about the next generation. Please. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know. I got the album right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it looks a little bit really great. Uh, I want to say I don't know if it's about Jim Fox or the new band Mad Bar members, but. Uh, Sound instruments played, everything is perfect, perfect in every way. But one, yeah, but one thing I've noticed that you moved just a little bit, a bit one step away from the roots of reggae. It's a bit more of the jazz and fusion. That's the feeling that I have. Is there something okay. that, that you are going to practice in the future? You're going to experiment with the music styles away from the reggae. You know, I have always uh, experimented with it. Uh, I don't necessarily consider the next generation to be more jazzy influenced than any of the previous uh, Ground Nation records. Uh, it's just a sound that is a, a part of my DNA, you know, from growing up with my father playing jazz piano, um, being surrounded by jazz music, from my older brother, reggae music, from when I was seven years old, eight years old. You know, having all of the albums of Burning Spear and Bob Marley, so the sound is this kind of natural blend of, of my past and my my love of music. So I just write songs. I'm just writing songs that move me and that I love and I feel need to be recorded. You know, and, and for Groundation, those songs have to be unique, um, something special about them. Not just a good reggae song with a good beat and a, you know a, a nice hook, good chorus. Uh, there has to be something in there and that becomes that kind of what they would say jazz fusion element polyrhythmic element not in common for four time uh the kind of non-diatonic chordal movements where the harmony can be outside of the key um so and long solos and and these type of things so you know that is that is definitely coming from the jazz world and really has not ever been in yeah. music yeah. Reggae, yeah. in reggae music you know so yeah, groundation is the, yeah that's what makes groundation groundation and that's what makes that sound so identifiable just like the new album next generation begins with vanity this 12 piece horn section arrangement uh with five saxophones four trumpets three trombones i mean the, the lead vocal doesn't come in for two and a half minutes on vanity yeah. Yeah. so yeah. it does it yeah, I mean, no, no other band starting an album or, or recording a song like that, but Groundation. So, so you know, it might be more jazzy, but obviously the roots of reggae, to me, is still very much there, even in songs like Bennett uh, and songs like My Shield. It is this African polyrhythmic thing. To me, the reggae is still pure. It's still the musician. It's still the message. It's still the, the, the bass, you know. It's still got this roots reggae thing that is groundation. I love one drop music. Okay. Foundation needs to evolve, not necessarily with uh, the taste of pop culture or the mass uh, music audience. Um, you know, uh, everything is changing. Everything is evolving from that time to this time and before that time. Um, Hebron Gate was a moment. 
uh, just as the next generation is a moment. The idea is that reggae music, groundation music, is speaking to conscious people. People who are aware of greater social concerns than just their families and their busy lives. Um, the need for more uh, equal rights and justice in the world. Uh, the need for uh, economic equality in the world and the right to, you know, a, a life and education and food, clothes and shelter for all people. So um, those are the principles and those are the audiences and, and that's the people that we're, we're singing to. And that hasn't changed. That hasn't changed. In fact, maybe the need for that consciousness has gotten greater, which is what I always said, that as time evolves, and the pressures of the rich and the poor and the, the first and second class and things become more divided, I feel that there will be a need for people to really associate themselves and connect with music that is challenging what the status quo is, quo is and challenging these certain things that we see, like on the new album, Fossil Fuels, these things that we know are wrong. We have to, as a humanity, stop doing them. You know, it's been it's been proven. So we have to stop doing them and develop the right moves. And, and that's the, the the audience, and that's the people who I hope are going to be listening to the next generation. The trouble of Rome is your main source Yeah, and that was that was one of many uh, inspiration for bringing back groundation as the next generation with a new ensemble once i tried to work it out uh, with the two remaining you know groundation has had so many musicians through the years 20 different you know drummers and female vocals and percussions and horn playing in the ensemble um, exactly yeah, I mean, you, have, you can't be playing picture on the wall and fourth dimension songs unless you have a knowledge of polyrhythms and that steps outside of the reggae world. So you really have to have um, a great musical background to perform it. Um, but, um, but, but really, that um, once I was trying to work it out with the, the two who had been there from the beginning, Marcus and Ryan, and I saw that it wasn't going to work. There was too many, you know, history and things in the way, and they wanted to do other things. Then I said to myself, okay, but foundation is what the world needs right now. You see what's happening socially, you see what's happening politically. And this is not a time for foundation to be sitting. So the need was to come strong again. Uh, just as we had different drummers and different people, it's time for a new ensemble to take up the mantle and put out this energy we cannot sit back while the world is changing into old time thinking and not progressing in the ways of, of, of creating a more stable and, a, and preserving a, a future for our children. So graduation has to come 2018. We gotta move. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, man. Because it's happening. It's happening. And, uh, and and we need to visit. You know, it's great to be performing in the U.S. and and uh, in in France and these places. But we need to go in places that the people in Greece and uh, uh, in Palestine and uh, you know into North Africa, where the people are really struggling, you know, where the people are really seeing. The, uh, what we what we watch on the news is affecting their families and their loved ones. Yeah. Tell me uh, about the next generation. What songs are special to you? How do you feel? <laughs> you know, I'm, like all the other Groundation albums, people ask me that. There are no favorite songs. There are, you know, we released Fossil Fuels and My Shield in advance of the album. But there are no single. You know, there's no radio single you know uh, yeah, and, and it's a it's a it's a concept so you might feel this song is up tempo and has the energy you might feel this slow ballad thing 
not what they're all meant to be there in the telling of this story. Uh, and the story of the next generation is coming from the previous album, A Miracle, which was about the female, about the empress, the mother of creation. So from the male and the female comes the child, comes the next generation. So this album is really what are the tools and principles we want to pass on to our children uh, to give them hope, to give them strength, things like my shield, and also warnings uh, of things that are not right, things like fossil fuels and vanity and these things. New Life is talking about democracy and how the, the modern world of, of uh, political uh, and economic um, meddling over countries and nations is creating the chaos, is creating this mass immigration and mass refugees that people in Europe have to face, you know, they have to do it. So out of this idea of we need to spread democracy, the will of the people and these things, you have a lot of, you know, political and covert uh, operations that are causing chaos in the world. And these people are, un, you know, they're not different than, than you or I or anything. And they're just looking for a new life, a new opportunity. So those are, those are some of the messages on the, on the new record. And um, every song is special, you know, or else we wouldn't have recorded it. <laughs> The biggest, well, there's lots of um, Well, uh, obviously, um, Harrison Staff and the Professor crew uh, came about uh, with the release of Professor, my first album, Madness. And those were songs that I wrote in Palestine, in the occupied territories in Israel. And so the concept was very personal, as opposed to Groundation's concept is a large, vast thing talking about many different issues uh, on our planet. Uh, this was about one issue, so it wasn't a groundation work. And then meeting a poet in Ramallah who knew reggae music, and I said, I play reggae. He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, okay, I must not know what reggae is. I said, reggae, like Bob Marley. He said, yeah, no, I, I know what reggae is. Let me ask you this, why is reggae music so Zionist in its message? I don't like reggae. Reggae music is negative music to me. So I was kind of shocked. And then I said, you know, I understand where you're coming from. Children of Israel, we want to be free, you know, Exodus, we know where we're going, we know where we've been, leaving Babylon, going to our father's land. You know, you can hear that as Theodore Herzl, you know, Zionist rhetoric. I said, oh, okay, I understand where you're coming from. But Rasta is just coming from the Bible. We're coming from Jamaica. We're coming from Christian people. And they're singing about what they're, what they're reading. So you have Israel, you have Moses and Aaron, and you have Joshua and all of these things. But Rasta is a fight for equal rights and justice for all people. In fact, I'm going to show this poet that by recording all this music in Jamaica with Elder Rasta to say, hey, listen, Rasta is not a message about Israel's foreign policy or the nation state of Israel. It's a message that all people deserve the right to life, including the beautiful Palestinian people who I've spent great time with. So that was that music. And what is the music? Simple. Reggae music, pure, pure and clean. Maybe uh, two sections, a few chords. Uh, it's not groundation. It's not through composed seven minute pieces. It's not long trombone solos for two minutes. It's not these things. It's not polyrhythmic in any way, shape, or form. In fact, it's not non-diatonic. You know, it doesn't shift keys within the music. So that's why I was able to record with Boris Mouth and Flava, Obia, Dalton, these great musicians. And that is the Professor Crew, which is reggae music I love. And it's so wonderful to play pure reggae with the founding fathers of reggae music. But my love and my passion is to create a music that no one's ever heard before. I love reggae. Reggae is the foundation. But my sound in my head, my dreams of music, is groundation. I never wanted to sound like Burning Spear or sound like Bob Marley. I wanted something. Yeah, to put on a groundation album and say, Whoa, what is this? Never heard this like this before. That's groundation. It's to the youth we go out planting seeds. So rest.
Israelis are being, you know, blown up in Jerusalem and things. But what you're doing is never going to lead to peace. Um, it, it, it's never, it's never going to give a homeland for Palestinians who were birthright from there. Um, so it's a problem, and for me, it's a problem because, as you said, being a Jew, uh, when you look at the Torah, Talmud, and these things. It says very specifically, Israel. Israel is the people. Whether it's Jew or Gentile that suffers on earth, we have to struggle for those people. And it does not matter if they are Jew. It's it's not right to oppress people. And it's supposed to be Israel, the house to defend all the Yeah, and so to have a nation called Israel is putting walls around people and checkpoints and, and, and taking away homes and things. It's bizarre. It's, they, need to, they need to read the book. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a big problem. And it, it really goes back to what took place in Europe, the Holocaust and these things. Because people can say it, it's not right for Jews to take Palestine and this and that. But let me tell you, even here in America, they didn't want the Jews. So are they going to go back to Germany, to their neighbors, who stood by and watched them being put onto the, the, the carts and to the, to the army ship and uh, uh, trucks and, and, and shipped off and took all of their wealth from their empty homes? No, they're not going to go there. I think in America, they took 40% of their quota of refugees from, from Europe. So they could have taken a lot of Jews and said no. And these Jews were on boats in the Mediterranean Sea. And they said, you know, thanks to, you know, Ben-Gurion and all these things, they said, oh, give them Palestine. You know, the, the rhetoric was uh, a land with no people, right? people with no land, but it wasn't the case. The Palestinians were living there, you know, uh, for generations. So that is created a big problem. And what people have to remember is that thousands of years ago, you have the Jewish people in Palestine. The Romans were there, and they destroyed. They made it illegal for Jews to be in Jerusalem. So the Jewish people had to spread. You know, Syria away and up and around into Europe, into Russia, and pogroms chased them out of Russia, and they went into Europe and these places for, for generations, for hundreds of years. But the people who remained in Palestine became Christian people after the Roman Empire forced to Christianity. And then, maybe a few hundred years after that, they became Muslim people because of the Muslim invasion. But they're really Jewish people. <laughs> Yeah, it, those times, so it's really the same family. Yes, I run back it's disconnected by thousands of years. We have the same situation in the Balkans. I'm, Montenegro is part of the ex-Yugoslavia. Oh, so you got six countries made of one. And we have the yeah. same struggle between ourselves. We are fighting each other. And that's, that's what we have to the best of you. So I, I really know how does it feel. Right, yeah, yeah man, you, you're, you're closer to that, you know, uh, than a lot of people. And, uh, and we have to remember that these nations and these countries and all, it's just made up, it's just made up. It's just made up by a few human beings who put little borders around that and gave people flags. But it means nothing. There's no borders, there's no barriers. This is our planet Earth. It belongs to all, all human beings that walk. So that's what we have to Just a couple of uh, okay, let's get back to the, to the music. Uh, Please. <laughs> yeah. uh, 
How do you feel when you listen to your last best album? About mm, each one, each one, yeah, three. When you listen, do you say, oh, why could I make this better? Or this was a blast, yep. I want to do it again. And yeah, yeah, man. Yep. I mean, uh, it was a very big learning process uh, for me. Uh, I didn't have starting a record label, starting the band, writing the music, producing the albums. I didn't have anybody I could call to say, hey, what's it like? What should I do? I was just trying certain things. Uh, Young Tree was something, we actually, the first record was tribute to the roots. Uh, and Young Tree and Each One Teach One were recorded by uni university friends of mine, Chris Dilkbeck and Corey Stuck. Uh, they recorded those first three albums and we recorded for the first two, including Young Tree, at the university. Not a great studio, <laughs> learning is. So the sound quality uh, between that and Hebron Gate is a world difference. And that's why Each One Teach One was just recently remixed and remastered with this deluxe version that has the dubs and the album. Because I mixed Each One Teach One three times. <laughs> Four times I mixed each one, each one. Spent tons of money. I just couldn't get the sound that I wanted. I was in Los Angeles, here in, here in Northern California. Just different engineers, different student men, just not getting the sound. And then maybe a year ago, two years ago, I transferred the analog tape into the digital world. And I could see all the problem I could see, man, on this one track, we had a percussion in the intro. We had a backing vocal harmony, and then we had a lead guitar part at the end. And so we had to live change the volume, and we couldn't EQ and perfect that shaker because it would affect the vocal. So now in the digital world, you can just cut out those pieces, put that on the percussion track, put that on the vocal track, and really get the sound quality that I was attempting to get back then. So that's why we did this, you know, remix, remastered version of each one, teach one. And yeah, you know, uh, musically and songwriting wise, I'm very proud of all of it. But it wasn't until Hebron Gate that to me, all right, now we can compete, you know, when somebody plays a Bob Marley record or somebody plays whatever it is and puts on the next Groundation song. Yeah, man, you're gonna, you can judge it on the merits of the music and not the sound quality. Criticize your music sometimes. Um, maybe sometimes. Very, very rarely. He is extremely supportive. Uh, his father, my grandfather, played saxophone, jazz saxophone. So, you know, way back in the twenties and thirties and those times. Um, so, you know, he has a really great appreciation, and I think that he, maybe I got it from him, but uh, he loves to hear soloists and he loves to hear rich music that is challenging uh, he loves to hear organic music so the fact that i'm using a real piano and not a synth if i was using a synth piano and a bunch of synthesizers and synth organs then my father would be like man hey because in his mind when he was you know in the 50s and things when jazz started to get electric is kind of a turn off to him so like Chick Corea electric band, he was like, no, 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 no. I don't know what Chick Corea is doing now. <laughs> you should be, if you want to play piano, if you want to play piano, play a piano. You know, it doesn't need to be, <laughs> but, but I, I think he hears that, that organic sound. You know, if we're using drum machines and all that, he'd probably say, hey, uh, so you're going to start using just computers now? For, you know, he would, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's an interesting relation, uh, son, father, when, yeah. when you're when both are musicians. Uh, I have a question from our founder and oldest member, Dadman. There are three of us. I'm the youngest one. Even now, I'm 15 years in, in the reggae music. I'm 
in love with the with the roots, especially uh, okay. and I think and all stuff, okay? And that man is asking you personally if he couldn't make it to this call. Yes, you will have an option to turn off some of the songs of people's heads. He's been hearing Silver Tone show for the past three months and his wife is complaining. Oh, wow. <laughs> that on, Just start listening to the new album and then you'll catch those. <laughs> okay, jokes aside, we would really love to see you on the Balkans. We've got some uh, connections. We have to manifest that. We need to be there for the people, and you know, this is a good connection. But it'd be nice to be able to shake hands and and then share some music. Uh, and my last question, because I kept talking about this for the past three months, uh, once you finish your European tour and uh, you make the radio like a jingle for our listeners, some sort of connection as a background to music you play on our radio station, just to show for your information. I mean, Russia is the only radio from Balkans. So, yeah, all these travel lines. Right in the street, it's been since 2002. 60 okay. years since we first started. Alright, you ready? Yeah. Way! Reagan NCA, Montenegro. This is Harrison Stafford Groundation. Keep it locked, Antenna M. Yeah, one love. Blessings to all the good people of the Balkans. Thank you. It was it was great. You, you knew all the information. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm really thrilled. I'm really thrilled. Nice. Thank you, Harrison. Thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure talking to you. I hope, My pleasure. I hope we will stay in touch and uh, for any possible future interviews and albums that you are doing. Yes. Well, now we have the link. You can always send me a message now. Thank you, Harrison. Bless you. Yeah, man. What? Yeah, man. Honor. Oh, no.